everyone. First of all, thanks all for joining my Android malware reverse engineering course. Really hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions throughout the course, feel free to ask me in the communication tools provided. What we're going to be covering today is we're going to be covering everything from creating simple Android applications, reverse engineering those applications, reverse engineering actual Android malware, using automated tooling to identify if that application is potentially malicious. We're going to be having an in-depth look at the Exodus Android malware, which is a piece of spyware. And seeded for all of that, we're going to be having some activities, we're going to be having some labs, and we're going to be having some quizzes, which will help us kind of challenge what we've learned so far in the course. A bit about me before we begin. My name is James Stevenson. This time, around about six years ago now, I graduated from the University of South Wales studying computer security. Since then, I've worked as an Android internal software engineer at British Telecom. I've worked as an offensive security researcher at a Finnish company called F-Secure. And these days, I'm working as an Android vulnerability researcher at a startup called Interrupt Labs. Alongside that, I've spoken at conferences. I've created training very similar to this. And I've also uh, created resources, tools, everything like that. So if you have any questions, I might not know all the answers, but feel free to reach out to me, and I'll see if I can help. The first things we're going to be doing today is downloading several tools. Throughout this, make sure that you're downloading the applications and tools for your architecture. For Windows, that will probably be 32-bit or 64-bit, uh, probably 64-bit these days, but you might be on a 32-bit system. This tool that we're going to download is Python, if you don't have it already. And we're just going to download the newest version of Python. I'm not going to go through the actual installation settings because it's basically as simple as clicking continue and moving on. What we need to do next is we need to install Jadex. And Jadex is a decompiler for APKs, which are Android applications, and JAR files. And we're going to be using that later on to take the Android applications and games that we make and decompile them. So to figure out how they're working behind the scenes. Next is install Android Studio. And again, Android Studio, the installation settings are as simple as clicking continue and next and just making sure that we've installed all the dependencies. What we're going to do next is we're going to create an Android emulated device. Now, you can go through this entire course using an actual device. What you'd have to do there is you'd have to go into the device settings, enable developer options, and then enable ADB. But today we're just going to be using an emulator. Now, we can follow the steps on the screen to create that emulator. And that we'll need to install is called PyCharm. Now, PyCharm is an IDE for writing Python. Similarly, how Android Studio is used for writing Java and Kotlin, PyCharm is primarily used for writing Python. PyCharm is fairly easy to install. We just go to the website, click download, and choose the community free version. Throughout this course, I'm going to be using a mix of Windows and Linux, but I would recommend that whenever you're dealing with malware samples or even creating malware or anything along those lines, I would recommend that you do all of the work in this course in a virtual machine. Uh, you can use Linux or Windows, um, but I would strongly recommend that you do it in a virtual machine, uh, ideally with network connectivity disconnected, just to be extra safe. So what I want to go into now is the process of building Android applications and then also the process of reverse engineering those same applications. As a software engineer, we create Android applications primarily in Java or Kotlin. When we're finished with developing those applications, they get compiled down into a Dalvik executable. Now that executable is basically what's run on the device. That then gets bundled into an APK, which is our Android package. And that APK includes everything from the assets used, the images used, things like formatting the app and language specifications, and actually the Dalvik executable itself. And that's what's run on the device. But as a reverse engineer, that Dalvik executable isn't human readable. So what we need to do is we need to unbundle that application first. And then we even need to decompile or disassemble that application because we need that to be human readable. 
The first approach that we can take is to decompile that application. And this will be using a decompiler, and that will take that Dalvik executable into a decompiled pseudo Java. Basically, the decompiler's best guess at what the Java for that application would have looked like. Now, that's great, and that's really useful if we want to figure out how the application's working or figure out if or how we can do something. But that's not so useful for patching because that pseudo Java is just the decompiler's best guess at what it would have looked like. And it's not the actual code. So we can't recompile it after that. You know, we can't decompile that APK, make some changes, recompile it, and send it on its way. That's just not how it works. But what we can do is we can disassemble that Dalvik executable into something called Smiley, which is basically a human readable representation of the Dalvik machine code. Now that Smiley is longer and more complex than the pseudo Java, but it is a one for one, or at least a more representative representation of the actual code, which means that we can alter that Smiley, reassemble it, and then it will be an altered version of that original application. Now all of this is gonna come in handy later on. So again, we're going to go to that Android malware repository, and we're going to download um, a sample of the Exodus malware. Now, the Exodus malware is actually a piece of spyware with extensive collection and interception capabilities. And we're going to be having a look at how this piece of malware works and if different types of malware aggregation tools and extraction tools, um, what they think of it, and really what we can kind of gauge from that as malware analysts. So first of all, we're going to upload the Exodus malware onto a service called APK Lab. Now, APK Lab is a part of Advanced and is used, again, similar to VirusTotal, as almost a community hub for sharing and analyzing malware, specifically for Android. Now, APK Lab is invite only, uh, but I'll provide some information below of how you can apply to get access to APK Lab. And in APK Lab, we can see a bunch of information very similar to things like Virus Total that we looked at previously. We can see the different types of permissions. We can see which ones are suspicious. We can see how the application is working. We can see how it dynamically runs and everything along those lines. Next, we're going to upload this APK into VirusTotal. We're going to have a look at what it comes back with. We can see that a handful of these antivirus providers identify this Exodus piece of malware as malicious. We can also see when it was first uploaded to VirusTotal, which gives us an indication of the lifespan of this piece of malware. Similar to before, we can see information that we saw previously, everything from the relationships it has to how it operates and everything along those lines. What we're going to do next is we're going to download a piece of software called Android Warn. Now we can download this in a very similar fashion to how we did with the other pieces of tooling we got from GitHub. And we just need to ensure that we've downloaded all of its dependencies as well. And once we've done that, we can run Android Warn with the command on the screen here and provide it with the APK that we want to analyze. And it will produce us a HTML output of everything that it's been able to extract from that Android potential malware. And we can see this HTML output here.
Similar to what we did before, we're now going to open the Exodus malware in JEDX GUI, and we can start to explore how it works. Similar to how we mentioned on how obfuscation works, we can see several obfuscated functions and classes in this um, decompiled Java. We can also look at things like the permissions. How do the permissions in this APK work? We looked at the same piece of malware earlier with Droid Detective, and Droid Detective picked it up as malicious, which means that many of the permissions in this APK are common with malware in Android applications. We can also have a look at the resources in use. We can have a look at how it's operating. And if we were to spend the time and really look at the code for this Java application, we'd be able to start to kind of dive down into what this piece of malware is actually doing. 